So I've had a lot of questions about some security features inside of Zoom and where some settings. So in case you want to make some changes to your meeting on the fly, you can do that very easily. So on your settings toolbar, you can see I can mute and turn my mic on and off. I can turn my camera on and off. Uh, my camera's off right now. Otherwise we'll have this effect. So I've turned that off for right now. You can go in and choose your virtual background. So if you do want to go in and make some changes to your virtual background, you can do so right there. So moving along in this toolbar down here, I'm going to click on security and under security, I can, once I've started a meeting, I can lock it. If at that point, all of your students have arrived and you don't want anyone else to join, you can click that lock. In addition to that, if you wanted to enable a waiting room after the fact, you could do that. For example, I don't have a waiting room on because I provide training and I want teachers to be able to join, but you might have enabled a waiting room and you might want to turn it off or turn it on at any point. So once most of your students have joined, if you want to put a, a waiting room on, that's an opportunity for you to move a disruptive student into the waiting room if need be, or for students that come a little bit late to class, they'll go to that waiting room there as well. In addition, I can make decisions about whether or not there's uh, participants can share a screen. So I can turn that on very easily and give everybody the power to do that. In addition to that, I've turned on chat, but you can also allow renaming themselves and unmuting themselves. So if you don't want students to unmute themselves, I can turn that off. I've muted everyone and I don't have to worry about anyone disrupting. Under here, I can see my participants. I'm the only one in my meeting because I'm just doing this as a demo, but I can see here, where I can mute all participants and I can see reactions here. So I can give the thumbs up, uh, other options, how things are going, need more time, all of that is available. This is also where you can individually go in and mute students. And I can also click on more um, and under regular students, you would see the option to move them into a the waiting room if need be, um, or to remove participants as well. This is also where you're gonna see your polls options. So right now I can launch that poll and uh, if I need to edit it, I could do that right here. You can create your poll ahead of time if need be, um, or you can create one on the fly. I can click launch polling. It goes out to participants and then I can end the polling session. So next up we have chats. Here's where I'm gonna see anyone that is participating in the chat. I can choose to send messages to everyone or to particular participants. Since I'm the only one in it, I won't see anyone else, but if you have students, you can send messages directly to particular students. Under the share screen here, I can choose share screen and I can choose all of my options of what I would like to share. Screen one, screen two, that whiteboard. I can also share, uh, if I've connected my iPhone or iPad, it will recognize that as a device. As you can see, I've got my OBS studio here. That's an app that's running. Email, I've got tabs, I've got options. All these are available. Down here is where I might choose to share my computer sound if I'm playing a video. In addition to that, if I'm sharing a video clip, I might want to optimize to make sure students can both hear and see it clearly. So I can pick those options for sharing. Under advanced, it's going to mirror that down to a, just a portion of a screen. So that means if you just want to show a sliver of an application, you could do that. If I want to share just music or computer sound uh, only, or if I would like to uh, mount a second camera, for example, a document camera, those options are there as well. So down here is the record option. So you can record your sessions. Down here is also the closed captioning. Keep in mind that closed, closed captioning just means that you or someone else that you've elected to be the person to type it can do so. For those of you that are interested on how to use a, a web captioner app, uh, I've got a how-to. I'll put the link in the description and you can check that out. And that shows you how to use web captioner, bringing in that window so you have live captioning during your sessions. Right here is where my breakout rooms are. So I can say I want to create my breakout rooms. I can say assign. Uh, my participants, so if I've got 20, 30 participants, I choose the number of rooms. I choose whether or not I do it automatically or manually. I'm going to say create a room. Obviously, I don't have any participants, but once I have my participants in here, I can easily reassign them or shuffle them to other places. I can choose my options, which are to move all participants into breakout rooms automatically. I had to check that. Make sure you checked it so your students move automatically. I can allow participants to return to the main session at any time. Uh, the breakout rooms close automatically after so long. So if you've made it an activity where students have to be with, the, with their uh, breakout groups for 5, 10, 20 minutes or whatever that is, you're going to put that time. You're going to have a timer to notify you that it's time to wrap up that session. In addition to that, you can put a countdown timer and how much time they're alerted to wrap up. So depending on the length of that time they are together, you might say you've got one minute left, guys, wrap it up. Or if it's just a quick little uh, check in, a quick think, pair, share, you might have it just be 10, 15, 30 seconds. So you can pick that time there as well. In addition to that, if you need to add more rooms because more participants come in, you can do that. So that is where the breakout rooms options are there. In addition to that, I can see my reactions. That's kind of the clap and the thumbs up. This is where I can check uh, and give my reactions and your students can do that as well. Uh, next up, I've got more. This is where I can push to Facebook 
uh, live on Facebook, live on Workplace by Facebook, and live on YouTube. So you need to connect any of those accounts, but you can live stream what you're doing in your Zoom directly to those uh, participants that are tuning in on those platforms. So Facebook, Facebook uh, Workplace, and YouTube Live. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you thought this video was beneficial, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you'll be notified for future videos.